Welcome to Angler's Trading Post. I'm Jeff Coffey and today we're talking about the basics of fly tying, which is your tools. Where do you start? How do you get started? So I'm just going to talk about a couple of the things that anybody that's going to tie, whether it be flies or jigs, the things that you have to have. And, and really, I would argue the most important investments you make get started. We're not going to talk about the vise today, but that's an important tool. Check out our video on vices. First thing, scissors. Don't just go grab your regular pair of Fiskars or something off the office. They're just not gonna be sharp enough. These scissors here, uh, there's a lot of features to these that are really designed for us fly tires. That is that first, the ability to adjust the tension in the blades based on the material that we're cutting. Next is there's little micro serrations in here. Those little serrations help to grab the individual fibers. When I go to cut a, a piece of fly fur, I want to be able to get in and not have it push those fibers, but actually grab and cut them cleanly. And it's really important to get the best out of my materials is to have a good pair of scissors. I say grab yourself a good pair of two inch, like these Wasatch Sculpino scissors. They're straight, you can get in and do fine work still with the tips. They're sharpenable, so you're able to take them apart and get them sharp again when they do get dull, and they've got the tension on there. Those are all really important features that you have to find in a pair of scissors. A lot of scissors just have a screw right in the middle. That's not gonna allow you to adjust the tension, and a lot of times those scissors cannot actually come back apart, so you're unable to sharpen them to where you need them to be. So invest in a good pair of scissors. They should start at about $35 and go up from there, whatever you choose. Uh, later on, you can invest in a curved pair. There's times that a curved pair, very handy. Short tipped ones are really nice for when you're doing detail work on small drives and, and, and small nymphs. But one good pair of scissors to start with, you can always build on it from there. This is just to get you started. The next is a bodkin. And bodkins come actually in just about every size in between these two. This is a small one inch micro bodkin. Now bodkins are, are very useful tools. Let me just start by saying these are not glue applicators. These are bodkins. If you use these to apply glue, you'll get little snags on there that will really kind of get in the way later on. Sometimes that glue can be difficult to get off, depending on what kind of glue it is. So keep your bodkins clean, use them as bodkins. And, and the primary reason, way that we use a bodkin is we come into materials and what we're trying to do is tease out as much of that material as we can. So we get it down into those nice things, down in next to the, to the thread, and we pull that out so that our fibers can come out, they're freed up, and they're nice and full for everything that we've put in there. It's a really important tool. That's, that's a good starter tool. I recommend starting with the Big Heavy. This is, this is what I use uh, on all of my, my bigger flies. I do not use this when I'm tying a size 20 Atoms but really I don't really use a bodkin much in that fly anyway. But, you know, if you're gonna start doing small flies and, and little nymphs to have something that'll get you in nice and close, grab the bodkin of the size appropriate to the flies that you're tying. If you're doing streamers, if you do anything size 10 or bigger at all, just go with the heavy bodkin. It's got a nice fine point to it, so even when you do do some small things, you can get in there and work with it. Finally, is our bobbin holder, okay? So let's talk about this for a second. The thread is spooled onto a bobbin. The bobbin is actually the plastic part that the thread gets spooled to. Sometimes we just call these bobbins, but actually these are the bobbin holders. And there's some, some key things about this. This is going to be the tool that's always in your hand. So going out and buying a $5 bobbin holder it's gonna get you frustrated at some point because they're not gonna manage the line well. You're gonna break a lot of thread if it's not perfectly smooth right here. And then just picking the right one as well. So there's even some expensive ones out there, like $35, that have ruby tips in them and, and different kinds of beads uh, up in the front there that they say you know makes it smooth. And while that might be smooth as the line is going out, it also creates a hard point so that when you're pulling to tension your thread, will start to break your thread. It, it creates a, a vector point for that to break over. What you want is a good ceramic tube. They're the smoothest. They're not going to braid 
your line. These are actually surgical implements that we use in these. They're, they're gonna be the best in handling your threads and a broad range of threads. After that, it really comes down to the size of your hand and then the size of flies. I have longer fingers. So I like our saltwater series bobbins because it's got a little bit longer. And when I hold that bobbin, when I'm tying, I palm it back here for to manage my tension. You can do a little bit of adjustment in bending the arms, but I manage that tension actually with, with the back of my hand right here as I'm tying in. So what I like is something with long legs, but a shorter tube in the front there. And that's really it. Once you have those things in a vise, you could be tying. And after that, as you start to specialize into what you like to tie, the type of fish that you're chasing, you'll start adding a few more tools. Matter of fact, I think at last count, we have 72 different tools just in the Wasatch line for you to choose from. We'll do some talking as we go along uh, about some of those other tools, when to use them, techniques, and I bet you'll come up with a couple new ones of your own. Well, I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you're enjoying our channel.